Let's get started on today's notes over multiplying polynomials. The first thing we're going to do is multiply a binomial by a binomial. So that is a two-term polynomial multiplied by a two-term polynomial. And we're going to use this acronym called FOIL. Okay, And each one of those letters stands for um, something that helps us remember what to do. Whenever you're multiplying, you want to make sure that every term in this first binomial gets multiplied by every term in this binomial. This acronym FOIL helps us to remember that. I really like to use FOIL and push it because um, when you get really good at using FOIL, you can start to combine the two terms in the middle. Typically is what you do, not all the time. Combine those two terms in the middle um, in your head, right, using mental math. So what you're going to do in this first example up here, F stands for the first terms. You're going to multiply this 3x in this first term by this 2x in the second term. So when I talk about first terms, we read from left to right. I'm talking about the first term in this binomial and the first term in this binomial as if we're reading from left to right. The second letter is 0. That stands for, not zero, O, <laughs> not letter, not numbers, letters. O, we're talking about outer terms. So now I'm going to multiply this 3x by this 1, okay? So the outer terms on the outside, 3x times 1, right? And so now I've now multiplied 3x times 2x and 3x times 1, right? I've multiplied it by every term in that second binomial. And then we get to the letter. I. I stands for inner terms. I'm now going to start with that second term in this first binomial, negative 5, right? Sign in front goes with the, um, the number. Negative 5 times 2x. L stands for last terms, as if I'm reading from left to right. I'm going to multiply this negative 5 times positive 1. And when we do that, when we multiply all of those together, this is when we multiplied the first term, 6x squared. That's when we multiplied the last, the outer terms. Negative 10x is what you would get when you multiplied the inner terms. And negative 5 is what you would get when you multiply those last terms. So after you get done multiplying, you write each one of the, um, the products down whenever you multiplied. And you get this four-term polynomial right here. And what we're going to do in this case is combine like terms if we have any like terms which we do, and I've circled those. Positive 3x and negative 10x combine to negative 7x. When we multiply these two binomials to get together, we get this trinomial 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. So let's do these examples. In example number one, I'm going to use FOIL, and I'm going to multiply the first terms together, x times x, and I get x squared. Oh, outer terms, and I'm going to move up so you can see that. Oh, outer terms, x times positive 5 is positive 5x. Now we're going to move to our inner terms. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And now we're going to combine like terms. 5x and negative 3x are like terms, and they combine to make 2x. So x squared plus 2x minus 15 is our product. And example number two, I'm going to FOIL this. Multiplying those first terms together, 3x times 5x, numbers then variables, we get 15x squared. Now I'm going to multiply those outer terms. 3x times negative 9 is negative 27x. Let's move on to our inner terms. And when I move on to that second uh, term in that first binomial, I just kind of, I put my arrows on the bottom and that's just something that I do. So seven times five X is positive 35 X. And now those last terms, seven times negative nine is negative 63. And now we're gonna combine like terms and our like terms are negative 27 X and positive 35x. Those combine to positive 8x. So 15x squared plus 8x minus 63 is the product of these two binomials. 
let's move on to example number three. 2x plus 1 times 3x squared minus 8. So in this case, I'm going to still FOIL it. I've got a binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to uh, start with my first terms. 2x times 3x squared. We're going to multiply the coefficients, and then we're going to apply the product rule. Again, which we've been doing, but we, this is an example. I have an x squared. So 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed. Outer terms, 2x times negative 8 is negative 16 x. Inner terms, 1 times 3x squared is positive 3x squared, so plus 3x squared. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. And in this case, I actually don't have any terms that are alike, so I can't combine like terms, but I am going to write it in standard form. So 6x cubed, next term would be 3x squared, so plus 3x squared, minus 16x, and then my constant, minus 8. Let's move on to multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. So again, you want to make sure when you're multiplying polynomials that each term and every polynomial gets, multiply, or gets multiplied together, right? So in this case, um, I really like to sometimes use the box method, which I do... Um, if you actually have these notes, um, I do offer like the same exact um, page where you can multiply, you can write it out as a box. 2x minus 1 times x squared plus 5x plus 8, and you like multiply it right here. x squared times 2x, 5x times 2x, 8 times 2x, right? And then you just combine like terms with all of the terms that are in this box. So that's called the box method. But um, that really helps if you're like multiplying polynomials and you're finding that you're getting everything wrong. That is usually, um, usually helps a lot in those situations. But I'm still going to use FOIL, but it's not really like FOIL. It's like FOIL, right? So um, I've got more terms here. So I'm not just going to be doing first outside, inside, last. I'm just going to make sure that I multiply this 2x times x squared, then times 5x, then times 8. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times 5x is positive 10x squared. 2x times 8 is positive 16x. So I've now multiplied this first term and this first binomial times every term in that trinomial. Now what I'm going to do is move on to negative 1, and I'm going to multiply negative 1 times every term in the second um, polynomial, the trinomial. So negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. And now I'm going to combine like terms. So... In this case, I'm going to write it in standard form, so I'm starting with the highest exponent, 2x cubed. And then I'm going to move on to the x squared, which would be 10x squared and negative x squared combines to make positive 9x squared. Now we're going to move on to the x's. 16x minus 5x combined to make positive 11x. And then my constant, which I'm not going, I don't combine it with anything, is just negative 8. So minus 8. And that's how you would multiply this binomial times a trinomial. And now let's, we're going to move on to expanding, um, expanding the power of a binomial. So some binomial expansion. And actually, here's the notes. I'm going to pass those. That's the box method. So, And I'll show you this really quickly if you've decided this way. The same exact problem, 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 1, 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 1. What I'm going to do is multiply 3x times 2x, and I would write that in the box like where they meet, kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, right? So 3x times 2x is going to be 6x squared. I'm going to do the same thing here. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 3x times 1 is 3x. And then negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. And then at this point, you're going to combine like terms. 
So 6x squared, I wouldn't combine it with anything. And then I've got 3x and negative 10x, which are diagonals. And a lot of times that's the case in these um, types of problems. Your diagonals are your like terms, so it makes it really nice um, and simple. So when I combine those, I get negative 7x. And then negative 5 is a constant that I'm not going to combine with anything. So negative 5. So there's your other... Um, way that you can multiply your binomials and your trinomials and it typically is kind of like um, fewer mistakes are made from a lot of students just in my experience so moving on to expanding a power of a binomial so in this example right here it says a plus b cubed well that means a plus b times a plus b times a plus b so in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to foil these first two binomials, and I'm going to get a trinomial. So I'm going to foil this, and I'm going to get a times a, which is a squared, a times b, which is positive ab, b times a, which is positive ab, if I'm writing in alpha order, right? Commutative property, b times a is the same thing as a times b, and then b times b is b squared. And in this case, um, I get uh, this polynomial right here, but I can combine these like terms, AB plus AB is 2AB plus B squared. So now I have this trinomial times this binomial, and I can FOIL it, or like FOIL is what I like to say, right? So I'm just making sure every term gets multiplied by every term, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and do this. a times a squared is a cubed. a times 2ab is positive 2a squared b. And then a times b squared is plus ab squared. And now let's move on to b. b times a squared is plus a squared b. b times 2ab is plus 2ab squared b times b squared is plus b cubed and then at this point we're just going to combine like terms so again when we're writing in standard form alpha order highest exponent first that's right here a cubed so now we're looking for any term that has an a squared in it and this one does 2 a squared b can be combined with 1 a squared b to make positive 3 a squared b then I can move on to a, a to the first power. That's this term right here. a, b squared can be combined with 2ab squared, which is plus 3ab squared. And then my last term, which I'm not going to combine with anything, is b cubed. And we've basically, what we've done, if we've, we've expanded this binomial, okay, by, to the power, by the power of 3. And it took a lot, right? We had to multiply the first set of binomials. We got a trinomial. Then we multiplied the trinomial times a binomial. We can actually actually use Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem to expand a binomial. Each number in Pascal's triangle is the sum of the two numbers diagonally above it. All of the outside numbers are one. So if you have this particular set of notes, you actually have Pascal's triangle right here, and I'm gonna go through it really quickly. Pascal's triangle looks like this, and you have all of these rows, right? So here's this row, this row, this row, this row. Okay, so we're actually going to call this top row, row zero, and we start with the number one, okay? And then in row one, we're going to, I said row one and I wrote row two. Row one right here is we've got two more ones, right? Starting in row two, we have ones on the outside, but then this number right here is the sum of the two numbers above it. So one plus one is two. Moving on to row three, you have ones on the outside. One plus two is three, two plus one is three. When you get to row four, ones are on the outside. One plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four. So knowing this pattern, you can actually um, continue Pascal's triangle, right? So row five, row six, row seven, if I wanted to 
do row eight, I could just, I start with the one here, and then I know the, the next number is the sum of the two numbers above it. So one plus seven is eight, and seven plus 21 is 28, and 21 plus 35 is 56. 35 plus 35 is 70. 35 plus 21 is 56, and you can start seeing a pattern here. 21 plus seven is 28. Seven plus one is eight and then I have a one on the outside. So you could actually continue Pascal's triangle and it will just go on and on and on and on. But that's Pascal's triangle. And what we can do is we can use Pascal's triangle to um, expand a binomial. And what, and I'm really gonna show you how to do this because it can be really confusing. There's a lot that goes into it, a lot. So binomial expansion, um, the coefficients from the product in the example above, right here, I'm gonna point these out, the coefficients, so this being a one, a three, a three, and a one. And remember, this was a plus b to the power of three. a plus b to the power of three, if I look, the power of three, the coefficients are gonna be one, three, three, and one, that's what the coefficients are gonna be. And that's actually row three in Pascal's triangle. One, three, three, and one. So what is gonna happen is whenever you have, for example, in number five, number five, number, number five is an exponent of a five, x minus y to the power of five, I'm gonna look at row five in Pascal's triangle and I'm gonna see what the coefficients of the product are gonna be whenever I expand this binomial. So instead of doing x times y times x times y, and then that product times x times y, and then that product times x times y, and then that product times x times y, I'm actually gonna use binomial expansion. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. It can be very tricky. So what I want you to do right now is, I have uh, Pascal's triangle up here, so we can actually use this, but we're mainly looking at row five, all of the numbers that I've underlined, okay? So what you're gonna do is it's a binomial. That first term is x, and I like to write it out like this. That second term is negative y. Here's what you're gonna do. This equals, I start with my first coefficient, which is one, and then that first term right here, I'm gonna put it in parentheses, times x to the power of the highest exponent. That second term is times negative y, not y, negative y to the lowest exponent, which would be zero. Plus, I'm gonna move on to this next coefficient, which is five, plus five, that first term, which is x. And then I'm gonna go one exponent down, one power down to the power of four, then I write that second term, negative y, and I go one exponent up to the power of one. And we're just gonna keep doing this, plus that next exponent, which is a 10, we're gonna write x, and we're gonna go one exponent down, which is three, and then negative y, one exponent up, which is two. Let's keep going, plus, and I'll write it like this, plus, that next coefficient, which is 10, and I'm just gonna start down here because it's kind of a lot. Um, 10, and then I'm gonna write x, that first term, one exponent down, which is a two, then negative y, one exponent up, which is a three, plus five, right? That's the next coefficient, so I'm just moving along the numbers, times x to the power of one exponent down, which is one, times negative y, one exponent up, which is four, plus coefficient of one, first term x, one exponent down, which is zero, plus negative y to the power of five. So then, using what we know about numbers in general, uh, is that anything to the power of zero is one, right? So I can cross off that right there, because. If I multiply by one, it's just the identity property. Right? I'm gonna get the same thing. So I can cross off those x to the power of zero. And then I'm gonna look at each single term at a time. This first term, one x to the fifth is just x to the fifth. This second term, 
I've got a 5. I've got x to the 4th. And then right here, I have negative y to the 1st. That means 5 times x to the 4th times negative, and let's just do this, negative 1y. What am I going to get? I'm going to get negative 5x to the 4th y. Let's move on to the third term. 10 times x cubed times negative y squared. Negative y squared is negative y times negative y. I get positive y squared. So in this case, I get positive plus 10 x cubed y squared. Moving on to the next one, 10 times x squared times negative y cubed. Negative y cubed is negative y times negative y times negative y, which is negative y cubed. Are you noticing a pattern? When you have a negative on the inside and that exponent is odd, is your product, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative, right? So minus 10x squared y cubed. Moving on to the next one right here. This is where we are. 5x to the first, first negative y to the power of 4. Well, knowing what we know now, negative y to the power of 4, negative 1y is what I wrote there, that's going to be a positive y to the fourth. So this is going to be plus 5x y to the fourth. And then in our last term, 1 times negative y to the fifth. Um, wait, hold on. Did I accidentally? You know what? I shouldn't have written a plus sign there. Whoops. There should not be. A, that's just multiplying, right? This is just um, multiplying. I'm multiplying right here, not adding. Sorry about that. So 1 times x to the power of 0 times negative y to the fifth. And I get, in this case, negative y to the fifth. And that's my answer. It's much faster, um, but there is a lot involved. So in example number six, in this case, um, it can get much trickier because the terms have um, numbers in them. Okay, so 2x plus 3y um, to the power of four. So in this case, this exponent right here, I'm going to look at the fourth row in Pascal's triangle, and remember we start with row zero, right? So that one is row zero. One, one, that's row one. Here is row four. Those are the coefficients that we're going to use whenever we're expanding this binomial. In this case, 2x is the first term and 3y is the second term. So this gets to be a little bit trickier, but I'm going to walk you through it. So, starting with my 1 right here, I'm going to start with 1 times the first term, which is 2x, raised to the highest exponent, which is a power of 4, times the second term, which is 3y raised to the lowest exponent, which is a 0, plus second number is a 4, times the first term, which is 2x, raised to one exponent lower, which to the power of 3, times 3y, one exponent up to the power of 1. Next coefficient is plus 6 times the first term, which is 2x, raised to one exponent less, so the power of 2, times 3y, raised to one exponent up, so that's to the power of 2, plus 4 times First term, which is 2x, raised to one exponent lower, which is 1, times 3y, raised to one exponent higher, which is 3, plus the last term, coefficient of 1, times 2x, raised to the power of 0, times 3y, raised to the power of 4. So there's a lot going on in this particular problem. Now we've got number values, and we need to pay attention to those. Let's start with our first term. 1 times 2x to the power of 4, 3y to the power of 0. I might as well go ahead and cross those off. 1 times 2x to the power of 4. We're, well, remember, when I'm raising 2, everything in these parentheses gets raised to the power of 4. 2 does as well, right? 2x to the power of 4. Well, 2 to the power of 4 is what? 2 times 2 
which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. So that becomes 16 times x to the power of 4. Let's move on to our next term. 4 times 2x cubed times 3y to the power of 1. So here we have 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3, 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So in this case, this is actually 8x cubed. We're going to multiply that 8 times 4, right, which is 32, 32 times 3, right? 3 to the power of 1 is just 3y. So I'm multiplying all those numbers together, right? So 4 times 8 is 32, times 3 is 96, plus 96. Then I've got x cubed, y. Don't forget your variables. Let's move on to the next term. You see why it gets kind of crazy? 6 times 2x cubed, well, this right here, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, x squared. Right here, 3y squared, well, that's 3 squared, y squared. 3 squared is 9, y squared is y squared, so 9y squared. So 6 times 4 is 24, times 9 is 216. So plus 216, now let's do our variables, x squared, y squared. Let's move on to the next term right here. 4 times, well, 2x to the power of 1, that's easy, that's 2x. 3y cubed, well, what is 3y cubed? 3 cubed is 27, and then also y to the power of 3. So now I need to do 4 times 2, which is 8, times 27, which is 216. 216, then I have an x and a y cubed. Let's move on to our last term, right here. 1 times, well, we've already crossed that 2x to the power of 0, because we know anything to the power of 0 is 1. 1 times 3y to the 4th. Well, 3 to the power of 4, 3 times 3, times 3, times 3, is 81. So I've got 81y to the 4th, plus 81, whoa, goodness gracious. 81, oh, now it's going to be glitching on me at the very end of the, the video, 81 to the power of 4. And it's not going to let me write it down, but it's plus 81 to the power of times y. Here we go, 81 times y to the power of 4. And this is your solution down here. 2x plus 3y to the power of 4 is, here's your product right? 16x to the fourth plus 96x cubed y plus 216x squared y squared plus 216xy cubed plus 81y to the fourth. That concludes your notes over multiplying polynomials. I hope it was helpful.